Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So I made a video yesterday, I titled it, Billie Jean, Raiders of the Lost Ark. And yeah, I, I don't think anybody understood like what I was trying to convey by putting those two together, specifically with that part of the song, and specifically with that part of the movie. So, I want to go ahead and explain a little bit about that, and it's because one of the parts of the song, the part that I had used in that was the for 40 days and for 40 nights part, is that um, I'm not 100% sure about like what Michael Jackson is saying there, okay? but. I'm just going to so in here, I'm going to show you about, these are my thoughts about that part of the song. And I'm going to show you some of the reasons and things that are going on there. Um, but I'm not 100% sure about that part of the song, what he's actually saying. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. So let me go ahead and show you a couple things. So first, this is that video. This is the video I had made yesterday. Let me play this. <coughs> So, first of all, now it's obvious, like, the one thing it's like, I think people, like, if the few people that saw this video, I think they were just trying to think that um, the silhouette of Indiana Jones resembles Michael Jackson, you know, like in Billie Jean. And I think that's all they saw, okay? But it's not. It's specifically that part, the for 40 days and for 40 nights, okay? The law was on her side. So, and then... This part of the movie right here in Indiana Jones, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, right here is where they're they're actually digging at the spot where the Ark of the Covenant is at. Okay, and so the Ark of the Covenant, the story of the Ark of the Covenant is the Ark of the Covenant holds the Ten Commandments, the original Ten Commandments, which Moses came down the mountain with the original Ten Commandments. Okay, so that's what the Ark of the Covenant is. It holds the Ten Commandments, God's law. Okay, and uh, so now I'm going to show you some things about like for 40 days and for 40 nights that th that's obviously a biblical reference. Okay, but exactly what he's reference reference referencing there is it's it's a little tricky, you know, because he's is he specifically talking about 40 days and 40 nights? Like, is he if he's is he trying to relate convey a period of time, or is he more just trying to convey that this is a biblical? Uh, relation to what the song is about. So let me show you a few things here. Um, let me show you before that. Um, let me show you something that happened. So see right here, there's uh, Billie Jean. See right here, I was looking up the lyrics of Billie Jean. On this one it says, for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on her side. Now, it confused me because I thought it said the law was on her side. So then I looked up the other Billie Jean verses, the other songs that has the lyrics, this one says, for 40 days and 40 nights, the law was on her side. Okay, see, the other one said, I was on her side. This one said, the law was on her side. And then this other one here says, the law was on her side. Okay, so I thought it said the law. You know, for 40 days and 40 nights, the law was on her side. So it's like, that's a, the law, God's law. You know, he's relating something because he's saying the 40 days and 40 nights. And then he says the law. So it's like he's talking about God's law. And then just to play it, this is the song where you can hear just the uh, just the vocals. You can hear him say the law is on her side. For 40 days and for 40 nights, the law was on her side. Who can stand okay. with The law was on her side. So in this version of it, it says law. So from what I understand, it says the law was on her side, okay? But I did like when it said I was on her side. I did like that. I want to show you a second about that too. But uh, let me show you here. Now these are... And these are some Bible references to the 40 days and for 40 nights, okay? Just to show you that it's clearly a Bible reference of what it is there, okay? So here's one. In the Old Testament, when God destroyed the earth with water, he caused it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so that's a, that's a big one, you know? He caused it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. That was the flood, you know? So that's Noah's Ark. That's uh, Noah had to, God told Noah to build the ark and store all the animals because he was going to make it rain for, and it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. Okay. So then another one. Okay. Listen to this. Flocks. Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. 
Okay, so Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. Then I believe that part of the story is that when he comes down from that mountain, he comes down with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I believe that's when he went up there. I know he came down out of a mountain. I'm pretty sure it was Mount Sinai. Yeah, and actually now if I look at this picture over here, see it's got these two stone tablets. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's referencing, is symbolizing the uh, Ten Commandments and stuff, right? So that's what I was saying about in, the, in that video I had made about the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I played that part of the song, was because at that point of the movie, and then he's got the silhouette, he looks like Michael Jackson, and then in that part of the movie, he's actually, that's the part where he's found the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, and he's digging it up, and the Ark of the Covenant holds the original Ten Commandments. That's supposed to be the story of what's going on there and shit, right? So then here, there's one more here that I'm going to show you. Okay, here we go. Jonah. In the New Testament, Jesus was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so Jesus was tempted for 40 days and for 40 nights, okay, in the New Testament. So this it's Old Testament and T New Testament, and it's a common thing between like some of the most major events that occur in the Bible that there's this common uh, thing that occurs is it happens for 40 days and for 40 nights, okay? So when Michael's talking about for 40 days and for 40 nights, in Billy Jean, let's use this one because that's actually it. So for 40 days and for 40 nights, the law was on her side. Okay, so he's, it's clearly a biblical reference. Okay, and to what it is and stuff, but it's, it's hard to uh, understand. Uh, but who can stand when she's in demand, her schemes and plans? Now, the other one, when it said, uh, when it said, for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on her side, but who can stand when she's in demand, her schemes and plans? That one, I actually liked the way it said, I was on her side. And I actually, I don't have a Thriller album. So in like, I, I think that it has the lyrics, I think on the sleeve of the Thriller album. If anybody out there has it, and you can actually look it up in Thriller and see if it's got the lyrics in there. And tell me what it says, because I'm wondering why this person made this mistake. It's like, well, is this somewhere else? You know, maybe it's maybe on the album, maybe it's written, I was on her side. It's one of those things, it's like, I don't know how this mistake occurred. But it could be that maybe in the album, if somebody out there has an album, you want to look that up. If it's got the lyrics there and stuff. So, but it's, it's one of those things, I don't know exactly how this was made. But... I wanted to speak about like this part because I can clarify this one a little bit better. When the other one says the law was on her side, he's clearly given a biblical reference, making sure you understand the 40 days and the 40 nights, the law was on her side. And he's also talking about himself being tested and stuff. Like I said, it's it's tricky because I'm not, it's a, it's a trickier passage from the song. Like I said, this is part of the thing. It's like, it's not my job to understand everything and perfectly ex explain it. But the things that I can't perfectly explain, what I'll do is I can give you my best idea of what I'm thinking. And what happened is I'm trying to d develop a better explanation and uh, for the story and better understanding. So going through the process of trying to have the better explanation, you have to expose the knowledge you know, and then maybe somebody else can interject a piece of information, which then can help develop the better understanding. So that's kind of like what you're doing. And, uh, you're just trying to, you're constantly working on it. You're crying because I'm trying to explain what's in Michael Jackson's mind. I can, I can understand what he's talking about, but to get the perfect explanation of it, now that's, it's a very tricky thing. It's not so easy to do and stuff, right? But so, for 40 days and for 40 nights, I was on her side. But who can stand when she's in demand? Because remember, okay, he's talking. So Billie Jean is Diana Ross, okay? And, uh, Michael's talking about that. I know that at the time that Diana, when Michael moved into her house after the Jackson signed to Motown, they moved into Diana Ross's house. I know for sure that that's when Diana Ross told him. And that's what they say in, in this uh, song, Billie Jean. He says, you know, this happens much too soon. She called me to her room. And I know that that's what he's talking to. He's referring to that moment in time. And that's the time of which she told him, because that's obviously when she would have told him. That's why they're living in her house is so she can have this opportunity and stuff, right? So I'm going to... This is a passage from Michael Jackson's book, Moonwalk. I'm just going to read to you a part of it here. It says, uh, 
When we finally moved to Southern California, we actually lived with Diana and stayed with her for more than a year on a part-time basis. She was so wonderful, mothering us and making us feel right at home. She really helped take care of us for at least a year and a half while my parents closed up the Gary house and looked for a house we could all live in, live in here in California. Now, He's trying to make it seem like she's just like took him in just like out of the goodness of her heart because they're, they're, they're transitioning. But they're, they're assigned to Motown at this time. They're professional. They're going on tours, you know. They've got money. There's no, there's no reason. They, and there, is, there was another house that they rented. There's no reason that they can't just rent a house because that's tax deductible stuff. That's all tax write-offs. All those things are like tax expenses, your living expenses. If you have to live there because that's the business and stuff, all that stuff's like tax stuff. And Barry Gordy works all that stuff. So like the reason for them to live there to say that it's an issue because the house, that's not a real reason. That's, and, you, and there's no reason for that. There's no reason for Diana to just allow them all into her house. There is no reason for it. There is no reason for it. There's none. There's no reason for that to be occurring unless Michael Jackson's actually Diana's child and she wants to have this time with him and because she had given him away, so there's all that time of what she missed out on, now she's got the time and she wants to tell him the truth and she wants to spend all of this time with him. That's why they're living there and that's why Michael says that they would go out alone, just the two of them. And so, so he says, uh, this was an important period in my life because Diana loved art and encouraged me to appreciate it too. She took the time to educate me about it. We, we'd go out almost every day, just the two of us. See, just the two of us. That's the, it's like, well, why is that occurring? Because if, if Diana is supposed to be wanting to nurture, if she's mothering, okay, if, she, if like he said, he's mothering, right? Mothering us, us. He says, mothering us and making us feel right at home. But then why would she take Michael out alone almost every day? Just like he says there, that does not make sense. We'd go out almost every day, just the two of us. That doesn't make any sense. Just the, that he that he put that in there. Just that we go out almost every day. Just the two of us. That well, how is she mothering the Jacksons and being like a mother figure to the whole Jackson family when she's clearly isolating Michael from the family and showing all this attention to Michael? That it's all about Michael. There's just no doubt about it. And this is that's what the song Billy Jean is about. So let me. Put it on, I know it says the law was on her side, but I'm just gonna use this one because I actually, it's, it's, it's kinda easier for me to explain it. Now, so for 40 days and for 40 nights, it says the law was on her side, but then this one says I was on her side. So let's take it in the context of like Michael saying, he moved into Diana Ross's house and then they would go out almost every day alone, right? So he's, he's saying that he's being tested. This is like a, it's like a thing, like how Jesus was tested and Moses was tested. And for 40 days, the, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. There's some kind of big biblical that this was like, he's saying when he first lived with Diana, there's like this uh, biblical environment of how he's being tested because now he's being tested between the, like I said, I don't know exactly, but I'm just going to try and explain it to the best of what I can. I'm trying to share my thoughts with you. So Michael's showing you here that he's being tested by God because the other one, the law was on her side. So he's being tested by God's law. He's, he's like being uh, pulled between the two families, the, the birth mother and then the family that he was raised with. You know, but he was on her side because that's what it just said that when uh, when he first moved in there, he was constantly with Diana. She would take him out every day. So he's like he's on her side. He's like on her hip. He's right there. But he says, but who can stand when she's in demand, her schemes and plan? But so Michael's saying, but I how could I stand up? How could I stand next to her forever? When she's in such demand, because it's Diana Ross that he's talking about, and then she's got her own schemes and her own plans of building, getting a husband and having a family. Because remember, also she was with Barry Gordy and had a kid, but then she marries the uh, Robert Ellis Silverstein guy, and then they tell the Tracy, or not the Tracy, the uh, Rhonda, Rhonda Ross. They tell Rhonda that the Silverstein is her father. 
when actually her father was Barry Gordy. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's Diana Ross. She's got, she's in demand. See right there, it shows like she's in demand. She's a star. She's a singer. She's making movies. She was dating Barry Gordy, but now she's hooked up with the Silverstein. And then she's going to have babies and trying to get married and have a family. See, it's her schemes and plans. Okay, and then they danced on the floor in the round. This was the dance of what they started to do. They started at that time. There's this dance now, this dance that's going to take. They're constantly dancing together, like they did the movie The Wiz. They make songs together. They're constantly in uh, out in public together at appearances and shows, and they're always together. They're constantly doing things. That's the dance of what begun uh, started at that time. After he moves into the house and she tells him the truth, then they're now they're they're joined together. In this dance that they're doing that's the dance on the floor in the round of what they're doing i think the floor in the round is something about the public too it's a it's a thing that's taking place in the eye of the public okay they're doing this dance in the eye of the public it has something to do with that and stuff right like i said it's hard for me to exactly explain what it is but i can tell you my thoughts about what i'm seeing and my understanding of this and stuff right so it's clearly it's like where's this billy jean how is how does that even relate to this stuff you know, it it doesn't that the Billy Jean story is so below and beneath the the uh, intense the intensity and the truthfulness of the Michael Jackson and the Diana Ross relationship is which is clearly expressed in this song. The Billy Jean does not is not involved in this stuff. I mean, you know, the Billy Jean is like the groupie stuff. The, the unknown groupie trying to cling on to the stars, that doesn't have anything to do with what these words are about. These words are about the real experience of what Michael was having to deal with when, uh, like I said, it's like the gods for, for 40 days and for 40 nights, the law was on, he says the law was on her side. Yeah, the law was on her side. He's being tested. He's being tested by God. And it's like, how would he be tested by God? It's like, well, if he now is being reunited with the mother who gave birth to him, who's trying to rekindle this relationship, but he's part of the Jackson family, and that's the family that actually raised him. Now you can see how Michael's un having that feeling of being tested by God. You know, it's it's crazy shit. And the, the law was on her side. I guess that would be because she's the birth mother. Because she is the birth mother, that's God's law. That's the connection. But Michael, he couldn't stand up, but who can stand when she's in demand, her schemes and plan? They, they, what can Michael do? There's like, he was being pulled between the two families. How could he actually please Diana and fulfill like her obligation with him and her and what's going on? when she can't acknowledge him as being her real son. There's just this weird shit that's going on. And that's what I'm saying, these words are, it's, it's high level art. And it's Michael Jackson expressing to the best of his ability, it, it is, it's a top, it's, he's at the top of his game. And when he's doing this, and this is like his number one life experience that influenced his life, that altered his life and did everything. And Michael laid it down in this song, Billie Jean. This is the song. This is the one that's just like by far the best. And Michael, like this is what you say. It's like this is an artist at the top of his game. Like when you look at a sports athlete, oh, he's, he was at the top of his game. He was at the top of his craft. That's what this is. And that's why I'm just so intrigued by this song because I, I know what the song's about. But now trying to explain it like in detail and have perfect understanding, it's, that's a little trickier because you're talking about Michael's mind and you're talking about understanding like his personal inner, inner feelings. And then not only does he have to come up and ex make these expressions of his, of his soul, he's got to make it sound good too and make it in a song form and stuff. It's another format of what he's doing. It's just tricky and stuff, right? So I just wanted to give you an, an explanation. It's like, that's what my Billie Jean, the Raiders of the Lost Ark video. So like, if you looked at that Billie Jean Raiders of the Lost Ark video and you just said, oh, well that looks, he's trying to think it looks like Michael's silhouette. So he put them together. If that's all you saw, well, you didn't see anything because when I did that, this explanation of the stuff I'm just given, that's what I saw. I was just trying to, instead of doing a long detailed explanation video, I was trying to give a quick explanation and I said, well, this kind of, this explains what I'm trying to say. This part of the Raiders of the Lost Ark and this part of the Billy Jean song and I put them together, but it's like one of those things. Did you understand what I was trying to do? You probably didn't understand it because you don't really understand what art is and stuff. Just like how people don't understand that Michael's an artist. That's why they never understood his work.